Of course, in an organization like this, if your economy grows a little faster or your economy grows a little slower, there are adjustments. And there can be adjustments every year. And we've seen them. Sometimes you pay a little bit more, sometimes you pay a little bit less. But it has never been the case that a €2 billion Euro bill has suddenly been presented. And it is not acceptable. It is an appalling way to behave. I'm not paying that bill on the 1st of December. If people think I are, they got another, I'm going to, they got another thing coming. It is not going to happen. Another European summit, another row between Europe and Britain. I have Chris Giles, the economics editor of the Financial Times, with me to explain why the European Commission this week has asked the UK to pay an extra 2.1 billion euros into the budget. Well, let me explain how the Euro European budget works. First of all, the countries agree how much the Commission is going to spend, how much Europe is going to spend. Then it gets some money from customs duties and a bit of the VAT base of every country. And then whatever's left over, they say they take the pot of whatever's left over and they say every country must contribute the same proportion of their gross national income, which is a measure very similar to GDP. The same proportion must come from every country. And so that is about 1%, roughly. And then that, because Britain has just revised up its GNI, its, its national income, very substantially, that then creates a big, and backwards a long way too, that then creates a lot more we should have paid all the way along because we were actually richer than we thought. Right, and just to be clear, the European budget itself is about 1% of GDP for the various European countries, 28 countries. But that's right. So it's roughly, it's a bit larger than uh, a comparative budget being, what, in regional well, terms? In, for most countries in Europe, it's between 40 and 55 percent. So it's very small in terms of what governments spend. Right. But the change can be quite big because in the UK, just in 2013 alone, gross national income has been revised up by 100 billion pounds. And so 1 percent of that is about a billion. Uh, now, of course, okay, it's more complicated. So we get a rebate as well. So yeah, the we'll leave the rebate is, alone because this is, thing gets we're getting to a very um, marshy country here. But just a uh, quick economics uh, primer here. Difference between GNI, gross national income, and GD GNP, GDP, gross domestic product, gross national it's product. Income from abroad, which, is, which for countries like the UK is very small. Countries like Ireland is very large. So it depends on your country. Most big countries in the EU, you can sort of say G GNI, GDP, it's pretty interchangeable. Some countries where you have lots of foreign income going in and out, like Ireland, with its, all its companies not quite based there or necessarily based there, or a lot of money coming from abroad, then it can make a big difference. And the, the GNI for Britain was revised up substantially by 100 billion and, uh, euros or so. Or so and, and I was rather surprised to see that uh, one of the reasons was because we have to take into account of crime and prostitution. That is a tiny, tiny part yeah, of it. The trouble is it's what gets the headlines. It's what gets the headlines. It wouldn't, maybe charities is about 10, 15, 20 times bigger than the upward revision. Also, the, the really big things in the upward revision for the level of GDP or the, level, the size of the economy is because we're measuring research and development differently. And so that should have a very big effect on countries like Germany as well and weapons as well. We now count production of weapons as part of GDP and we didn't before. So what we don't know yet is whether this has been applied consistently across the Well, EU. that's the point because the story is moving. It's not clear and it's not even clear whether necessarily David Cameron is going to have to pay up. It isn't, because what we don't know at the moment, and we're, everyone's trying to find out, and Brussels are giving very conflicting uh, accounts at the moment, is whether Britain has certainly gone early with these revisions, but they are going to revise the national income of every country higher because of weapons and R&D. And is it just because Britain's already put this through its national account, so it looks suddenly much richer than before, but other countries don't? And number 10 are sort of suggesting that might be the reason. Finally... David Cameron may have a get-out clause, but which he really needs. He's got a by-election in Rochester coming up uh, difficult. Uh, his party, Tories, are trailing UKIP, the in Independence Party, UK Independence yeah. Party. Um, is that so? He has a, there's a bit of a silver cloud, possibly. There might be. It might entirely become a day one, a one-day story. 
Maybe, but also uh, it might easily be able to be kicked into the longer grass because we, there's a lot of uncertainty about these numbers. And so certainly we're not going to know for certain how much Britain's going to have to pay till next year sometime. And of course we should remember as well, just to conclude, that there's going to be some other big rows coming up in Europe, not least with the French budget deficit going over 3% of GDP. So there are other countries that have problems, not just Britain. Chris, Giles, thank you very much indeed.